All right, my homies, welcome to This Is Kingdom. This is Grace. This is Talon. This is TJ. And this week, y'all, we're going to be reading the talk. Well, not reading it. We're going to be talking about the talk. We're, we're going to read, read a talk slowly. Talk Everybody you get guys. comfy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about the talk, Just Keep Going With Faith by Elder Carl B. Cook. Grace, take it away. Um, so this past semester, like since like January, May, December, since December, I accidentally started coaching the girls lacrosse team at Maple Mountain. And by accidentally, I mean like legitimately accidentally. Like every day from August to like October, like the girls would come to my class and they'd be like, please coach. And I'd be like, no no, I'm not coaching. And they'd say it over and over and over again. And I'm a sucker. And so finally it was like December and they're like, we still don't have a coach. Like, please. And like, finally I just like texted the athletic director. I was like, I'll I'll coach. I said, fine. Yeah, you had to. That's so sad that we don't have a coach. And they were like every day. I was like, what am I supposed to do? Crush their dreams? I was like, yeah, okay, fine. So I started coaching. No previous experience. Let me start there. But every single day since the first open gym, like I would go in and I'd be like, this is a state championship team. Like we're winning, like we're taking state. Like this is it, like no questions asked. And like the first three weeks, I will be honest, like they kept looking at me and they were like, they were like, do you know who's in our region? Like, do you know who's like in our division? And I was like, did I ask? I said, no, I'm not, I'm not asking about the other teams. Like, I'm telling you that this is a state championship team. Like, and then like by like the first game of the season, like they were like, yeah, this is a state championship team. Like they were like, we're doing it. Like we're taking state. And I was like, yeah, we're taking state. And we get going and like our expectations of the season are like here. Like we are like, let's go. Like there was no one that was going to beat us. There was mm-hmm. no one that like, it was like we were going to state. Um, and then we lost. And it was like right at the beginning of region play, like right when it was like determining like your like spot in the playoff rankings. And like, and I won't lie. Like I was like, uh-oh. And like every girl on the team in their head was like, uh-oh. And I like went home after our first loss and I was driving home and every single day, like at some point, like I would be like, no, like this is state championship team. Like it was just like in me, like I was just like, and I drove home and I was like, well now what? Because like we lost, like, like we had all this build up, all this expectation and now we lost. And then we played and we lost again. And then I was like, oh no. <laughs> and then I was like, I can't, like, what am I supposed to do? Build up all their expectations just for them to get like absolutely crushed down. Um, and then like, there was just like this slump in our season. And I started realizing that like my mindset in this of like, don't get their expectations too high. Cause what if they don't take state? Like all of a sudden, like took away any faith I had in the team. Mm. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, like I like was so worried about disappointing them at the end of the season that I was like, oh, I'd rather have you have no expectations than like have your expectations to like go to state and then like be crushed when you like lose. And I won't lie. Like I just was like, yeah, like I I guess like I'd rather lose out the season. Like I don't want any expectations. Like I don't even care. Like it's not a big deal. And then all of a sudden I started realizing I was like, we're never going to win a game if we don't have faith that we can be state champions. And so we like built it all back up again and we were like hyped and we like entered the state tournament and we were like going crazy and we were like, this is it. Like, let's go. Like we are back. Like we're going to state and we had to buy the first round and everyone was like, oh, that's so sick. And then we like had our like uh, second round like game and we like crushed it. Like we like absolutely destroyed that team. And then we played and it was the quarterfinal game. It was on Saturday. It was, like, all this buildup, all this hype. Like, we played first, and then our boys' team played after us. Like, everyone was, like, stoked at the whole school. And we get there. We come out, like, killing it. Like, we're, like, up 3 nothing. And I was, like, we're going to state. I was, like, we're winning the day. We're winning the week. I was, like, we're winning it all. And everyone on the team was, like, yeah. And we have, like, this halftime moment. Everyone's stoked. And then the other team scores and scores and scores and scores. And there was three minutes left. And I was, like, now what? And I just was like, you know what? I still want them to play like we're taking state. Like, I hope that they still play like we're taking state. And um, we walked away and we lost. We lost in quarterfinals. And I, it just like made me stop and think for a second. And I guess like that's what I'm thinking about today is like, how do you have faith in the wake of disappointment? Because I feel like for me, the thing that takes away my faith the quickest is being disappointed or even just the fear of disappointment. Like that like almost ruined like that whole lacrosse experience because I was like, oh, I can't like I can't like build these girls up just like 
I can't give them faith in something that I was like, I don't know, you know? Mm. You know, I've been thinking this whole time. I've been thinking um, of one of my favorite verses. It's the verse that talks about like managing your expectations um, so you don't get disappointed. You guys know that verse? No. No, you don't because it's not real. There's not a <laughs> single verse that I know of, and I've read them all. I was like trying to think. Maybe, that was embarrassing. Uh, maybe. <laughs> for me. They're like thinking so hard. Like maybe like, I'm missing dang. it. And in I, my head, I was like, I really should, I should read that. <laughs> I have not found a verse that teaches us to manage expectations, but we do it so often to avoid disappointment yeah. and to avoid discouragement. And I see it so much like, in dating, you know what I mean? People yep. are like, I'm going to have zero expectations because then I won't be disappointed, you know? Even when people go to the movies, they're yeah. like, oh, I don't, I'm I not going to have, have any expectations. expectations. Yeah, zero ex- expectations for this movie. So like, then I won't be disappointed. But I don't see it anywhere in the scriptures. What I could show you, though, is verse after verse after verse that talks about believing and that talks about believing in Christ and believing in good things to come. Like I could literally go off for an hour on verses that talk about believing they're everywhere. Like if you were to search the word, y'all should do this, okay? I haven't done it, but we should all do it. Search the word believe in scriptures and see how many times that comes up. I would guess it is a lot because I don't think Christ is trying to teach us to be people that just manage our expectations. I think he wants us to be people that believe big. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. I'm just thinking about grace from your story and what Town said. I'm and I'm thinking about this verse, um, and and it's because it's and it's a real one. It's a real one. Uh, it's catchy, <laughs> but it's just in it's the one in Proverbs. I think twenty nine something, and it's where there's no vision, the people perish. Mm. And I just love it because it's a real one. Because like, because <laughs> the way that grace, the way that you set up your season, like. Like you just you set up the season by how you were coaching up the girls, you know, and you gave them a vision, and I feel like coaches that don't do that, like the people will perish, and then you're relying on the raw talent, and it usually doesn't last. And so I just love that, man. If we start with just getting hyped and seeing that vision ourselves, and then helping spread that vision, like that's what helps us like keep on moving. And um, it's so cool because we were texting. This actually happens today. We're, we're talking to you from the future. Um, but Grace, I, I asked Grace on the group the chat. Quarter like, final, the quarterfinal yeah. game was today. We're just recording this podcast in advance. Yeah. That's what he so means by that. from the future, we're aliens. And we, uh, on the group chat, I was like, uh, hey, Grace, like, how'd the game go? And you wouldn't even, like, I don't know, like, you wouldn't even think that they lost because the way that you talked about it and the way that you're so positive and, and the way that you, like, the perspective you had on it, it was just like so like i don't know it was just like so good and it was so uplifting and it and it made i know it made me like happy for you guys but losing doesn't seem like a like a happy thing you know what i mean but because of your vision and because of how you inspired those girls like there's experiences in the season that will be way better than actually winning the actual game right it's interesting because yeah like we started out talking about lacrosse but um i think this is so much bigger than that Because no matter what, there are going to be times in your life when you're faced with circumstances that you can either choose to believe or you can choose to shut down. And you can say, I actually don't want expectations here. And um, there's, it's been, so I teach at um, a really awesome school. I'm obsessed with it. I love it. And it's been a really hard few years there. And um, this past year in November, um, one of the most incredible girls at that entire school actually found out that she had cancer and or something yeah cancer I think it was cancer and um it kind of came out of nowhere and by kind of I mean like she was like running in like the cross country meet like on Saturday and then found out on like Tuesday like it was like everyone was like what in the world is even happening and um she passed away really quickly after they found out that she had cancer and I taught a lot of her friends and they came in the next day and they were like um we fasted for her. Like we prayed for her to be healed. Like we like gave it everything we had. And they were like, we had more faith than we've ever had in our entire lives. Like we put everything on the table for that. Like what happened? And we kind of all just sat there and I didn't really have an answer. And then a couple of days later, her parents came and talked and um, 
they talked about how they had never seen faith like that ever before in like kids that age and that they were like these are incredible incredible kids and they were like this has been a lesson to us in what it looks like to have faith and um we talked in my seminary class a couple days after that and I talked with a few kids and they were just like you know what like I wouldn't take back believing that she was going to be healed because I have never put more effort into faith than then and it didn't work out how they thought but I think that they came to know Jesus better that day because of it. And sometimes it's not going to work out. Sometimes you're going to be disappointed. Probably a lot of times you're going to be disappointed. But I think that there's something in believing big that is worth it. It's so interesting listening to you say that. My thought was like sometimes the result or sometimes the result of believing big isn't the outcome. It's what happens in the process. You know what I mean? It's like the relationships that are strengthened, like the character that is built. The thing is, when you don't believe in anything, you don't you don't work, you don't act, you don't move forward. Like you're in this discouraged hole where like nothing happens. But the second you start believing, the amazing things can happen because we just have like a God that's good. You know what I mean? We have we have a savior that can overcome. And like that's a reason to believe. The second we start living like we believe. We might not get the result that we expect, but beautiful like things will happen in the process. Mm. I love that. I got to ask you guys just for a quick thought on this. Like, what would be your advice, your encouragement for those who are, you know, trying to believe, trying to believe big, like trying to not just, you know, put limits and expectations on themselves? Like, what would be your biggest encouragement for them in that moment? Start small. Um, like I think that that is one of the biggest things that my mission taught me is to just believe in this crazy God of miracles that like mm. can do things that you never would have imagined. And the way that I started figuring out like what that looked like was like praying and looking for and hoping for like the tiniest small miracles. And then once those started happening bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger it, to the point that I was like, there's no way this could happen. And then it did. And like, I remember like one day it was like me and my companion were walking and she was new to the mission and she's like, I've never had like a tamale before. Like, I was like, that's crazy. <laughs> and then I was like, nah, I said, before we go home, we're going to get one. And she was like, where? And I said, no, we're going to get one. Like someone's going to give one to us. Mm -hmm. And she was like, there ain't no way. I said, we're praying for it right now. And we like prayed. And like, I could tell that she was like, there ain't no way. And I was like, God, please. I said, if you do anything <laughs> for me, I was like, we just got to like, please, like, let's collab on this because like, I need it. And she was like, okay. And then like, the more we walked and I was like, no, like he's going to do it. He's going to do it. And she was like, yeah, he's going to do it. And like, we were like, getting so stoked about it and then we like knocked on this door and this woman answered and her hands were like covered in like masa and I was like oh, I was like I said what you doing right now she said come on in she literally was like a professional like a professional tamale maker I said no way she like gave us bags and bags and sometimes believing big is gonna look like walking out of someone's house with like 13 tamales for like your entire district and like a girl eating a tamale for the first time who can't believe that God like cared so much about her that like he would like send us to like a professional tamale maker's house like sometimes believing big looks like that. Sometimes believing big looks like walking on water and sometimes it looks like sinking. Mm. And sometimes it looks like the miracle that you prayed for for the last like six months doesn't work out. But I just cannot stop thinking that we believe in a God of crazy miracles. So why not give him a chance to prove it to you? Mm. My homies this week, Maybe instead of managing your expectations, maybe just maybe you can just go believe like crazy, believe so big and just see what happens. Press forward, saints, with steadfast faith in Christ, with hope's bright flame alight in heart and mind. With love of God and love of all mankind, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. See you next week.